Hey guys, my name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna share three things that as a GM, I ask my players to do before session one begins and why I think that these three things should be commonplace across all of nerddom. This video assumes that your group has a working understanding of session zero and you guys have come together and you understand how that world is going to work, you understand certain classes that may not fit, things of that nature. For those of you who don't know what a session zero is, we will make another video describing that because session zeros are way too important for just a little like burp in this video. Number one, I ask them to show up with a one page length minimum backstory. A lot of GMs are okay with, they have their world and they'll, from time to time, they'll take a little character flavor and they'll sprinkle it in to their story, like at the beginning when all the players meet, I am this noble fighter and they see me as I have this kind of, this is how I fight. Both as a player and as a GM, I really, really hate not having characters that are super involved in the story. As a player, it really sucks to, for me to build this intricate character both mechanically and in terms of where he's from, what he's done, his relationships with other people, things like that, and have it never get hit upon over the course of the whole campaign. This is especially true if we're in an urban setting or even like if I'm in the same state, nation, however the political divides are in your world as where I grew up and I ask my GM, how do I get home? Where's my house? Where's my wife if I'm married? Where's the shop I work at if I'm an apprentice, wizard, alchemist, what have you, and the GM draws a blank. It makes me feel like I'm about this big in the world and we're supposed to be the heroes of this world. We're supposed to be huge, but we're this, and it's not good. As a GM, when I have players with vague outlines of what they want their character to be, what they want them to do, and like, I have a funny voice, this is my character voice, and my dad is this, and, and he did this, and I am a fighter. GMs bust their butt making a world for everybody to enjoy. They often spend hours of their free time making this thing for other people, and I feel it's only fair we ask our players to do about this much in return so we can make sure we build a world where they're not just running around solving quests, whatever is going on, they're a living, breathing part of it because that's just the case. Tabletop RPG worlds are living, breathing things. Things change all the time, whether or not we, the players, are seeing them. And everybody there, even if it's just like the goblin horde that is supposed to be the CR1 like road bump on the way to the dungeon that the players just axe through. They have lives, they have families. It's true for the players too, and if they give you this, it can help you as a GM have a little bit of extra content, whether that be a little segue in between mission A and mission B where somebody runs into their long lost sister or even a full campaign arc where somebody has to go home and overthrow their evil uncle and become high king of wherever. It gives you extra content that is guaranteed 10 out of 10 times to be a hit with the players because it involves them directly. A second thing I ask my players to do, this can be accomplished at session zero, but again, separate video. By session one, to have determined a party alignment. For those of us who don't know what that is, a party alignment is one of the nine alignments we choose to build the story around and we have all the players choose their alignment at least starting within one step of that alignment so for example let's say party alignment becomes lawful neutral we have lawful good characters lawful neutral characters lawful evil characters and true neutral characters starting out in a world that I as the GM know is going to be working around this alignment, around order, around honor, around probably a lot of military stuff, maybe some mysteries, court cases, things of that nature. It gives me, like, there's this big picture of all the things I could do for my players, but it helps me zoom in and know that I need this. This one little thing here is what they're looking for and how they're going to respond. It's especially helpful if you want to play an open world game where you might be improvising a little more. Games where you have new players or maybe you're the new GM in a new group and you don't know how certain players or even the entire group are going to react to or role play certain alignments looking at you evil players. You got a setting where you're playing a bunch of lawful good guys and somebody's neutral evil. That's fine. It can work. But not if that neutral evil guy is gonna sit here and listen to the information you give him and deciding what he wants to do is, I'm gonna kill that guy. Obviously not gonna work. The lawful good characters are suddenly gonna and then try to arrest or kill this guy who's just running around murder hoboing. 
the party alignment system can help keep that in check and for you as the GM you can see how different alignments are played by different players and it gives you a little bit of a feel for stuff as you're moving forward so you know the kind of content to give them to make sure it goes over without a hitch and everybody likes it. The last thing I ask all my players to have before session one, and this one's a little flexible given the amount of power gamers in a group or the amount of people who are brand new to a system, I ask everybody to have an at least vague idea of how their characters are going to progress as they level in terms of feats, spells, what have you. This is a very fluid thing. People change their minds all the time. New books are released. Better ways to accomplish certain fighting styles or certain spells come out. But if I have a basic understanding of I have two guys in the party who are going to be archers, two guys who are going to be two weapon fighting characters, and one guy who's going to go, if we're playing Pathfinder, Power Attack, Furious Focus, Vital Strike for one big attack and lots of damage. It helps me build more comprehensive encounters, both in the immediate game and as the game progresses towards the end. For example, let's say I have, and I've had this happen before, I've been in a party where I was the only melee guy running around on a barbarian and then I have three rangers behind me with their bows. As the only guy in the front line, I'm taking massive amounts of damage and often just dropping down dead because there aren't any archers and I'm running headlong into, I think we were fighting in Pathfinder, the Red Mantis Assassins, so these guys dual wielding weapons with high threat ranges just chewing me up, eating me for breakfast while nobody else is taking damage. The GM could have made more archers in response to fire back at them, or even characters that can teleport or have spells or something to get up in the face of that archer, challenge them a little more. So that's all I have to say about that. If you have anything to add, throw it in the comments below. We'll keep the discussion going. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time.